Hey guys, we're going to continue our series on Lagrange multipliers by looking at a very simple example of this technique. Probably the simplest example you could actually make. Alright, so let's see what it is. We have the sum of two numbers is 20. What is the maximum possible product? Okay, so I'm going to use this the fact that this example is very simple to help illustrate some of the the, some of the ideas behind this technique and what sort of things you should be focusing on. So first thing is you want to figure out what your constraint is. I suggest you do this first because it's very easy to get confused as to which function is your constraint and which is your optimizer. And the constraint has some very easy clues. So to start with, there's always going to be some kind of number that you have to attain. Usually it'll be the biggest number that you see if this is some kind of real world problem. If it's not, then you just have to look at what number you're attaining. So the number that we have to attain in this case is 20. So that means this is going to be our constraint. Okay. So if we let x and y be the two numbers, then we see that their sum, which is x plus y, has to equal 20. And that just, now that we're just left with finding what the optimizing function is, in this case, we need to optimize the product. We need to maximize it. So what we could do is we can say function f of x, y equals x times y. And this is what we need to optimize. So now we just follow the technique of Lagrange multiplier. So we have, first we take the first partials of with respect to x. So f with respect to x equals lambda times g with respect to x. And this would equal y equals lambda times 1. And then we take the partials with respect to y. So this gives us x equals lambda times 1. And then we also write down our constraint equation because it's important to keep all these three equations together. Because Usually when you're trying to solve for x and y, it can be very easy to forget that this is also going to be heavily utilized. Of course in this example it's, everything is very simple so you're not going to forget this. but. If you have a more complicated example, you might get confused with trying to solve for x and y with two complicated partial derivatives. But this helps you keep everything in one place. All right, so we have our three equations. Now, one way to solve this would be to just notice that x equals y, since they're both equal to lambda. So then you substitute this in, and we have x plus x equals 20. So then x equals 10, and y equals 10 and then you plug this into our function f, which is just the product, so you get that the product is 100. Okay. Now, we made one slightly minor assumption here, right? And that is, how did we know that this was actually the maximum? Because the values that we get for x and y, they just refer to some critical point, but we don't necessarily know if it's a local max or a local min just yet, right? So in this problem, because it's not very complicated, what we can do is we know that if we perturb x and y by a little bit, that, mean, that is, if we add a little bit to x and we subtract a little bit to y, or add a little bit to y and subtract a little bit to x, how will that change our maximum, or how will that change our product? Well, so let's look at this. So suppose x equals something of the form 10 minus a. So that means we're subtracting a little bit of x. Then we have to add that bit back to y because their product has their sum has to be the same. Their sum has to always be 20. So then y would have to be in the form 10 plus a. Now remember, a could be negative, or it could be 0, or it could be positive. It doesn't matter. But that means the product is going to be 10 minus a times 10 plus a which equals 100 minus a squared. Now this is at most 100, because a, a squared is at the very least 0. So this is an algebraic argument for why what we have is actually our maximum. And in fact, because our problem itself is very simple, this algebraic argument can stand by itself, and it actually can be a good enough solution to this optimization problem. But normally you won't be able to have such simple arguments to verify that what you have is the maximum. So just one thing to know is if this is a problem on a test, 
and you only get one solution or one critical point, very likely it's going to be the one that you want. So in that case, I really wouldn't worry about it. But if it is absolutely necessary for you to figure out whether the point you have is a local max or a local minimum, then what you want to do is you want to use what's called the bordered Hessian technique. Now we're going to talk about that in a later video in this series, so not right now. So that's all for this problem. If you want to see more videos like this, or you found this useful, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. There's going to be new videos every week. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll get to it. So thanks for watching and that's all for today. See ya.